Hey guys, it's John, small town, small time bookseller. And, uh, yes, I'm back. I'm here. I've been selling books. I've just haven't been telling you about them. Me. <laughs> but now I shall. And I hopefully you would like to hear such things. And, uh, so that's why I'm here. I do sell books on eBay. And, uh, when I do, I try to get in here and I'll tell you all about them. That's all I do. It's all this channel is. I don't. I don't do any garage sale videos. I don't do any yard sale videos. I don't do any GoPros, the good old bins, looking at my hands, playing like fountains, or radiating like the moon, or storming like the sea, or, or the silence is the silence of wicked rocks. Now, I love those videos, watch them all the time, but I don't do that here. I'm just going to tell you what I sold so that you might then go forth and do much likewise and in similar manner and so watch and such forth and all that so been about a i don't know how long it's been since the last video it's been a while but until a few days ago if i was trying to do a video right here there would have been a 23 year old laying on the bed over there going Dad, turn off the line turn the fan back on uh actually yeah, it was probably unfair to categorize my son that way but he's back at college and so I've got the room back to myself. And um, yeah, so that's kind of been a big reason. Took Basically took a break for the Christmas holidays to, uh, to spend time with family. Had a wonderful break. Hope you all did too. And so this video is going to... So my last video went up through November 31st. So this video will be everything I sold on eBay from December 1st to December 10th. So those 10-day period there. And there were some good ones. Some of one of my... Um, one of my highest selling books ever. So highest profit books ever. Well, not, not, well, one of them, you know, it, it's up there. So you'll want to stick around for that or just skip ahead. You can do that too. If you want to hear about all the little $10 ones, but that's where life is. Life, life is with the $10 books. That's what, that's really where you want to be. Um, and so how many books do we have? Um, 28 in total. And so we'll go over totals and all and averages and whatnots um, at the end. So I like to start off slow and build up to a giant crescendo at the end. Um, and so I'll go from my, my least profitable books all the way up to my most profitable for this time period. So again, this is December 1st through December 10th. Um, and we'll start it off. So the first one, I only had one that was not a book. And that's this first one. I sold one of my SIM cards, $7.75 been selling those about one a month or something like that. So, um, did manage to sell one of those. All right, moving on. So now $10 books. Um, for those of you who are in, possibly new here, I get the vast majority of my books at the Goodwill bins. So there's three of them in Houston. I'm about an hour South of Houston. And so I go up there, you know, occasionally and, uh, my, my, um, Goodwill bins up there in, in Houston, they're, they're, the books are three for a dollar. Everything else is by the pound. If you're not familiar with Goodwill bins, clothes and electronics and all that stuff is usually sold by the pound. But mine has books for three for a dollar. <coughs> and that's where I get the majority of my books these days. I've also got an Amazon return store, the bin drop in Lake Jackson, uh, that I occasionally will, will go to, but they up their prices. So I do get stuff there, but not as much. And very rarely I hit an estate sale or garage sale or something like that. But I just, I just don't. I just don't like doing that. I don't find much around here. So um, most of them are good old bins. So unless otherwise stated, <laughs> every book that I'll mention here is 33 cents. All right. So let's uh, get into it. First book on the list, The Roadside Geology of Texas, sold for $10. Um, I actually have a copy of this and uh, found another one. So I thought, well, if I liked it, someone else might like it as well. And it's sure enough, I was right. And they sold it. I sold it. They bought it. Ten bucks. Um, the next one, Hypnotism Made Practical. This is the kind of title where you're like, yeah, this is going to sell. I actually thought it would sell for more because this was a vintage book. It had a vintage cover. It looked like something that would be uh, collectible. And um, I was kind of surprised it only sold for $10, but it still was a $10 sale. Um, moving on, 
Quick Start Guides, I have sold a lot of these over the years. This was starting a business Quick Start Guide. Um, there's a lot in this series, these Quick Start Guides. Do sell, if you see these out there cheap, they are routinely a $10 to $12 uh, sale. This, they move quickly. And I'm gonna move that off the screen. Um, and so yes, so that was uh, that was a good one. Here's my next one, the Casa Guatemalteca. Um, I actually had two copies of this. I got this one at the Goodwill bins, and then I actually found another one at at the rare and occasional estate sale I went to. So I don't actually know which one <laughs> this one I sold is, but it was sold for ten dollars. So it was either thirty three cents at the Goodwill bins or a dollar at that estate sale. I'm not sure which one I sold, but I've got another one on the shelf. Right, right around there somewhere actually is where it is. Um, next we have elements of style, designing a home, not the elements of style with like the writing guide. This is designing a home and it was $12 and 75 cents. And our next one, um, religion is one of those categories. I always tell everybody that religion definitely sells, including Bibles. This was a called Learning the Ropes. It was a new translation of the Bible, or so it claimed to be, and it sold for $15. But definitely look up religion, uh, commentaries on religion, things like that. And Bibles themselves also sell uh, very well. Um, all right. Um, I also have some luck selling books in Spanish. This next one was La Riqueza en Cuatro Pisos, uh, sold for $15. And, uh, yeah, so I've been selling quite a few things to uh, Puerto Rico, actually, is where a lot of this stuff is, has gone. A lot of the stuff I sell that's in Spanish goes to Puerto Rico. Um, and moving on. Okay, here we go. The next one, um, animal skeletons and anatomy for $15. So anything that, if you look at it and go, ooh, <laughs> mm, <laughs> okay, uh, you know, animal skeletons. I was definitely flipping through the book to animal skeletons. And uh, yeah, that was kind of different, kind of odd, kind of unusual. Made me say, ooh. And so I thought, well, that's gonna make someone else say, ooh. And they're gonna wanna buy it. And sure enough, they did. So animal skeletons and anatomy sold $15. Um, the next one, another one that also made me say, ooh, uh, the fires of lust and sex in the middle ages. Sold for $16. So again, yeah, anything that makes you say, ooh, mm, well, that might make somebody else think the same thing, and they're going to want to buy it. All right, now we're moving up to $20 books. All right, we have The Mystical City of God. I was glad to sell this one, and especially glad for $20, because it had sat on my shelf for quite some time, and it finally did sell. Um, another one, oh, here's another good um, genre, is magic. So I've actually got two books on magic. This one, History of Magic, this is more of occult kind of magic. The next one that's later in the list is more like, ta-da, kind of magic. Uh, but this one was the History of Magic. It sold for $20. Um, this one, next one was Goodwill, no, it was the bin drop, the Amazon return store. Um, I had four or five of these uh, the Elements, A Visual History, and it sold for $20. I picked up several of them. I've still got a few of them on the shelf. They've been selling, um, but this one sold for $20. i have also been, uh, I think that I'm selling more vintage books lately because I've been listing them. So a lot of times the, the easier ones to sell are your newer ones. Go on the eBay app, scan the barcode, see what they've been selling for. And, you know, it's easy to list that way. It's easy to see. The ones that don't have barcodes are often the ones that a lot of people who only sell on Amazon are skipping at the um, at the at the at the Goodwill bins because they're just scanning every barcode they see. And if it doesn't have a barcode, they're often leaving them. So those are often the ones that I can find. And so, but they're also difficult, more difficult to list because you actually have to type in the or I usually use the voice one, so I just you know read the title, find the book, um, but also condition issues are, are more prevalent in older books, so you have to be more careful about how you're grading them. A brand new study guide, you can look at it. No, not written in, it's not bent up, it's in very good condition. But a vintage book, you have to really look at it. How's the binding? Is there a lot of foxing? Is there any writing? Are there book plates in it? Is there any staining? 
takes time to describe the issues more. And so it overall just takes more time to list a vintage book uh, than something newer. But there's money to be found in those. So this one is uh, The Life of Sir William Oster Harvey Cushing. Is that right? I think I can read my writing. I think it's what it says. 1940 book and it sold for $20. Um, this next one is kind of cool. This is a new market shooting scripts of the Matrix. It's like actual script, like the you know that has the the character's name and their line, and it just goes goes line through line through uh, the Matrix movie, and that sold for twenty one dollars. So I thought that was kind of a neat book. Um, moving on up, we got multi business for diversification from diversification to corporate holdings. So twenty four ninety five business books. Um, do sell. I find that business is one of those genres where there isn't a lot of collectability. So older vintage business books typically don't sell. The newer ones do. It's not like with other medical or science where there's a lot of historical, even mathematics, there's a lot of, uh, of historical uh, appreciation of some of the of, of older books that might sell not because somebody's studying that, but because it's collectible. I don't find that with business as much, but still always, you know, uh, worth checking. But this was a newer book on the, uh, and sold for $24.95. The next one was a great pickup I did at the, uh, at the Amazon return store. So there was about, I picked up about six of these for, I think a dollar a piece. And uh, I've been selling them the NFPA 99 healthcare facilities code. And uh, this one sold for $25. i have been taking offers on a few, selling them for around that $25 to $30 range. Um, the next one is, oh, yes. Emotions Anonymous, 1978, first edition, $25. And then moving on. Um, another religious book was Hurlbutt's. Aren't you glad your name's not Hurlbut? Sorry to all you Hurlbuts out there, but Hurlbuts, Story of the Bible. From 1904, $30. So this is a good example of one that I didn't know if the condition it was in would be considered good. I mean, it's 100 and almost 120 years old, right? You know, 118 years old. And it seemed to be pretty good condition, but... I'm not an expert in grading, so I was very careful, I took very good pictures of it all, showed the fading, showed the marks, showed all the foxing and all, and described it as well. So not only showing it in the pictures, um, but also going in and, and making sure in the description I described everything. Um, and then on the vintage books, you don't have to choose if it's very good, good, um, you know, acceptable. That's you don't have to choose one of those like you do with a modern book. If it's in that in that collectible um, category, there's not an option. So you have to make sure though that you are giving that description in your description and even in the title if if possible. Um, but that one sold for thirty dollars. All right, another uh, medical book was Hospice and Palliative Medicine Handbook sold for thirty two dollars. And, um, oh, so I did sell, maybe this was the one I was thinking of, um, graphic novels can sell. Uh, this one I sold for a surprising amount, actually. This was Anne Rice's The Vampire Lestat graphic novel. So for $37.50. I was surprised about that one. Um, the next one I sold, foreign language stuff, studying foreign language. So books printed in Spanish, I do have pretty good luck selling. Books printed in other languages, I have not. I've got an interesting one I'm going to show you at the end here. But I've got a whole bunch of books like that are in Turkish or Hungarian or Serbian. Um, I just don't find for fiction translations of books in those languages. I have not been able to sell many of those at all. But books on learning foreign languages, yes. So this one was the Sogon Korean 1B set, sold for $40. And to that buyer, I say, Come up some nida. Isaram pabo saram anieo. Isaram doktokio. And all right. <laughs> so, uh, moving along, we have, oh, here's my other magic book. So, this is more of the ta da kind of magic. This is the magic of Michael Amar. Amar? 
Alahar, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name, and it sold for $40. Here's another one to look out for. So this Patrick O'Brien set, there's five volumes in this set of the complete Aubrey slash Maturin novels, and they all sell really well. There's a lot of there's, it seems to be this particular edition sells really well because you can find these books for not much money. But this one here, this one sells really well. So this is I just volume five of the set and it sold for $45 for the one book and it comes in a set of five. So I had sold, I think I'd sold it earlier than this. I'd sold a volume one and for like $35 or $40. And when I sold that one, the person asked me um, if I had other volumes, and I didn't at that time. So then at an estate sale, I actually found, um, f this was in a, in, in a box set of these books, but it was missing volume one, I think. It was missing one of the five. So I only had four of them, so I'm selling them individually. But again, 45 bucks for just one volume of that set. So if you see these by Patrick O'Brien, this this set on the Aubrey novels, um, they sell really well. Other ones don't, but for some reason, this one does. Um, next sale was a really nice sale of, of nine um, books from the, uh, the, the lot, from the um, military aircraft uh, hall that I got several months back, still selling those. A lot of nine of these books sold for $50. So we're moving on up. All right. That's 50 bucks. Okay. So now we're getting into the big time monies here. All right. The next one. Placing reinforcing bars. Um, don't know anything about that. Um, but uh, it sold for $60. And uh, okay. So now that was 60. Okay. Here's the next one and then my two biggies after this this is a good one though i don't want to discount this. this is telecommunications breakdown so i was surprised that looking at this i did not expect it to be an 85 dollars sale but yet it was 85 bucks for that one okay this next sale was kind of fun because this is the one when i was at the goodwill bins and made me realize this whole idea of selling books to make some extra money is a possibility because I was at the Goodwill bins. Might have been the first time I was ever at a Goodwill bins. And I'm looking through the books and I see a old, small, old looking book. Kind of underneath us, kind of digging through. A lot of people were tossing books around, you know. And I dug a little bit and and I found this in one of the grooves of one of those big blue bins that they have there at the, at the Goodwill bins. And I picked it up. And I opened it, and I was like, oh, it's uh, Charles Dickens. It's the um, David Copperfield. And I opened it up to the copyright page, and it's at 1849. And I sat there holding it going, there's no possible way. I just found an 1849 copy of David Copperfield at the bottom of the Goodwill bins around all these, surrounded by all these people. And then I found volume two and I'm like, well, about three minutes later, looking around, I found volume three. So this right here was an 1849 and 1850 first edition of the Tauchnitz, the Tauchnitz publication of it from 1849 to 1850 of David Copperfield. And I sold the three volume set for $180. I've had it for a long time. I had it listed at around $250. Um, kind of played around with the price a little bit. Finally got some, you know, had some watchers on it occasionally. Sent out an offer that somebody finally accepted at the $180. Which I got that right. So it's, yeah, $180. Uh, so that was really fun to sell that. Um, so that's what made me realize that, okay, so there are, there's value to be found here at the Goodwill Bits. Um, this next one is also kind of a fun one because so that was not the big sale of the 10 day period. I got one more that beat that one, but that was probably the most fun because of that history I had with me realizing that was long tail. I mean, it sat on my shelf for probably a year, maybe more than a year, but I knew that there would be a collector that would want that version. 
and I finally did. It had a lot of foxing. It was not in the best condition. One of the volumes especially was very faded, and so that's why I, initially I think I put up like $400, but then realizing the condition issues that made me drop it and drop it. And I, so 180, I think is a good price for those, for that set. Okay. So the next one was one where, um, I'm standing next to another bookseller, you know, in the Goodwill bins, when, when they're bringing out the new stuff, they bring out like 10 bins for the stuff. You have to wait until they say go. And so buying a big thing of books guy, really nice guy. He's at the stuff a lot. I talked to him a lot, but he's very, cut through. He's a type that just grabs the armfuls and puts them in a, in a, in a, in a basket and goes to the corner and then scans it. But he's just blindly grabbing everything. So it comes in there. I see one, a large book in plastic and it's sitting right in front of me. And I know he sees it too. And so as soon as the, the people say, go, we both went and grabbed it. And, <laughs> and I just turned to him and I said, that one's mine. And uh, he, I think, realizing that he's going to lose, you know, the volume. He's going for volume. I'm going for, for that, you know, not volume. So I pecked that one up and I was able to put it in my basket. And uh, it's, again, as with most high value, high dollar books, it's going to sit for a while. And uh, it did, but it did finally sell for $210. The Rizzolo Rizzoli inside venice um it's still in plastic but i believe it's photographs of of um apartments and residences in venice italy and uh, uh somebody had offered me uh 175 and i countered it to 210 i thought i lost a sale by countering and they emailed back and said hey do you think we'll all get this in time for christmas i'm getting this for my son and it was early enough to where I was like, yeah, I, I mean, I don't see why I wouldn't. It's, it's You should be fine to get in before Christmas. And so 210 bucks for that book. Long tail, but worth it. I mean, it's a book. It's not taking up a whole lot of room. And I've got a few other books, you know, but this was, that was a fun one. So I, it was bigger than any box I have. So I had to kind of Frankenstein one together and put, you know, a lot of tape around it. And uh, it seemed to have gotten their fines. Yeah, I haven't heard any complaints yet. So, happy about that one. All right. So, that's it for, for this 10-day period. Um, that brings me to a total. I had 28 books in this period for $1,099.20. And that brought me to an average of $39.26. So, obviously, those last two helped out with that a lot. But still. You know, 28 books in 10 days for $1,099. And I had the one not a book. And really, I was like, beginning of December, I was like, okay, next 10 days, what I really want to do is just sell. I want to have a, a 28 to 1 book to non-book ratio. And, and, I, and I managed that one. I had 28 books to the one not a book. And I was like, as long as that one not a book is like $7.75, then I'm going to be happy. And sure enough, nailed it once again. Nailed the not a book on the nose. One book, $7.75. All right, I was going to show you something I picked up at the Goodwill bins the other day. And I want to, um, for those of you who might not know, uh, something you can do on your phone. So I saw this sitting in ye olden uh, Goodwill bins books, bins. And it is literally completely in Chinese. All right, there is not a word of English anywhere in here. Um, and let's kind of get you a little bit. So, found this one and this one that's different um, together. And, uh, you know, I studied some Japanese, but I don't know any Chinese, so I, I know very few of the characters that are in Japanese. I, could, I knew this was Chinese and not Japanese just because, you know, I know some Japanese. And so I, I, but I, what I didn't know is, is that a two volume set or is these, or is there more? And so on your phone, if you go to Google translate, um, you can use your camera it has a camera option. So all you do is you like you're going to take a picture, you just hover your camera over the text that you want to translate. You have to choose. So you can use auto detect, but since I knew it's Chinese, I'm a Chinese English, you hover over it 
and it'll tell you what it is. It's not a great translation, especially from something like Chinese to English, which is so different. But I was able to tell that this is a dictionary of traditional Chinese medicine. This little symbol here means something like middle. And this one was something like superior. Something, okay, there's a middle and a superior. I was hoping it said a volume one, a volume two. Later, like an hour later, they brought out some more bins and a third one was there. And this one says um, supplementary or appendix or something like that. So I have no idea if this is a complete set or not, right? I have no idea, but you can see that this, the part here is different. Um, tried a, uh, oh, when I did the uh, Google translation, this came up as a publisher right here and had like, you know, I forget what the publisher was, is when, when Shung Publishing House or something like that. So I put that in my title, but in the title on my listing, I put Chinese traditional medicine, dic dictionary of Chinese, of traditional Chinese medicine, three volumes set, and then that publisher name. I tried a image search, both in eBay and on Google. Did not find one exactly like it. And um, so really nothing to go off of other than it looked kind of cool. And it looks like somebody might really want this. And I put it up for, I think, a couple hundred bucks. I can't remember now exactly, 200 or 250. But I wanted to share that, um, that, that Google Translate on the phone. Uh, I also use that at the Amazon return store because a lot of the boxes, a lot of stuff that gets returned there is from China. And so if you pull that up, you may be able to tell what's in the box. But again, the translations can be rather inaccurate, not exact for sure. So you have to kind of do some investigative work on it as well. But if any of you know anything about Chinese traditional medicine, I would love to know what you think on these books or another another way to find out more information about them. I went ahead and listed them. I think I put them up for $250. And uh, yeah, we'll see where that goes. So that's my exciting news for today. Um, and uh, yeah, so man, sales have been, uh, actually this week sales have been the definition of up and down. I had zero sales on Thursday. I had zero sales yesterday on Saturday. Friday, I had 12. That was the most I'd ever had. That was my all-time record for one day. I had 12 sales on Friday. And then I had a couple today. So like zero, 12, zero. So it's been a little odd that way. But I'm trying to get through my death pile. I'm working through. I have did not do any sourcing this weekend. And just putting stuff that's already on my shelf up for sale. And I'm trying to, trying to get through this before I source a whole lot. It's hard not to. You know how it goes. But anyways, hey, um, this is fun. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you learned something. And uh, I am 16 subscribers short from a 1,000. So I would love it if you subscribed if you're not already. Share it out with somebody. Tell your neighbor. Create an account for your dog. Whatever you want to do. Help me get up to 1,000 subscribers. That would be fun. And um, you know what? Hope you're selling the heck out of a bunch of stuff. And I will see you next time. Hopefully see you sooner rather than later. Adios.